Greetings. Today's video, lesson 3.3, is subtracting rational numbers. Our essential question is how do you subtract rational numbers? Thinking back to what we've learned about with adding rational numbers, we've come to the conclusion that adding rational numbers is very similar to adding integers. And you're going to find that with subtracting rational numbers, you can also apply the same rules that we learned with subtracting integers. Uh, thinking back to subtracting integers, we know that when we are subtracting integers, we can rewrite the problem by adding the opposite. Which is going to be very helpful because, again, sometimes it's easier to look at an addition problem than it is to try to decipher the subtraction problem. So our first example, we are subtracting a positive rational number. The temperature on an outdoor thermometer on Monday was 5.5 degrees Celsius. The temperature on Thursday was 7.25 degrees less than the temperature on Monday. What was the temperature on Thursday? So a step one is to write out the problem so on Monday, it was 5.5 degrees. And then on Thursday, it was 7.25 degrees less than. So that right there, that's that vocabulary that tells me, oh, I'm going to be subtracting. So I'm going to subtract 7. Let me erase that. That was a very bad 7. 7.25. Now, this is where I'm going to want to rewrite the problem as addition. So I know that the first number stays the same. And then I'm going to turn that subtraction into addition. <coughs> and then I need to have the opposite of 7.25 which is a negative 7.25. So now my rewritten problem is 5.5 plus negative 7.25. Now in order to solve this, I need to find the difference of the absolute values. So that's where I subtract the two absolute values. So 7.25 minus 5. 0.5, and then I'm going to add a 0 here. So now when I subtract, 5 minus 0 is 5. Mm -hmm. I need to borrow. 12 minus 5 is 7. And 6 minus 5 is 1. So 1 1.75. Now I need to assign it either a positive or negative. And this is where I look back at the problem, and I see in this problem my negative here has a greater absolute value than my positive here. So therefore my answer is negative 1.75. Now what I'd like you to do is pause the video, and I want you to try this problem here. Try that, and then I will do it together, and we can check it. So, negative 3 and 1 half minus 4 and 1 half. My first step here, I'm going to rewrite the problem. I know that my first number doesn't change. Now I'm going to add the opposite. So the opposite of this 4 and a half is a negative 4 and a half. So my rewritten problem is negative 3 and a half plus negative four and a half. Now I have a half and a half, <clears throat> and I know that a half and a half make a whole, so I have one whole plus four plus three. So together I have a total of eight, and because I'm adding two rational numbers with the same sign, that same sign follows into my answer, so my answer is negative eight.
Now for our second example, we are going to subtract a negative rational number. During the hottest week of the summer, the water level of the Muskrat River was five-sixths foot below normal. The following week, the level was one-third foot below normal. What is the overall change in the water level? So to write out this problem, because there's some things that are happening, I'm going to actually start with where is, where is the water level at currently. So that is... It, and by currently, I'm saying in the context of the problem, currently we would say it's at one-third foot below normal. So I'm going to start with that, and that's going to be negative one-third because it's below. And then I'm going to subtract from that where it was at, which was negative five-six. So the problem is negative one-third minus negative 5, 6. And again, I'm going to rewrite this problem using addition. So it's negative 1 third. I'm going to change that subtraction to addition. And then the opposite of negative 5, 6 is positive 5, 6. So my rewritten problem is negative 1 third plus, make that look like a plus sign, negative one-third plus five-sixths. But again, because I'm dealing with fractions and I'm adding fractions, I know that I need to have that common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite the problem here using a common denominator. And with three and six, six is that common denominator, so I really only need to change my first fraction. So one-third is equivalent to two-sixths, so I'm just going to use negative two-sixths plus 5 6 and when I solve this <clears throat> when I solve this I can see that I have more positives than I do negatives so I know that my answer is going to be a positive and then this is just where I find the difference of the two 5 6 minus 2 6 again I'm finding the difference using the absolute values so I have 3 6, and 3 6 can be reduced to 1 half. So my answer, like we already established, is a positive 1 half. Now I want you to try this one on your own. So pause the video and try this one. Negative 12.5 minus negative 4.8. All right, let's do this one together. Again, I'm going to rewrite the problem using addition. So negative 12.5. My subtraction here becomes addition. And then I'm going to take the opposite of this negative 4.8, which is a positive 4.8. So my new problem is negative 12.5 plus 4.8. Now when I look here, I know that I can, I can see, obviously, that I have more negatives than I do positives. So I know my answer is negative. So to find, that, to find out um, how many more negatives I have, I need to take the absolute value of the two and subtract them. So over here, my absolute value is 12.5. And from that, I'm going to take away 4.8. And I need to borrow. So now I have 15 minus 8. 7, and then I have 11 minus 4, which is 7. Now I need to bring down my decimal point. So my answer here is negative 7.7. 7.
Now what I would like you to do for class tomorrow, try these, these four here. Try these four here. And again, for the subtraction, refer back up to the top where we talked about subtracting integers, we can add the opposite. So we can rewrite it by adding the opposite. And again, if you have questions, make sure to mark them down so we can discuss them in class.